Keep it about four and a half or five miles an hour. There's gravel. It's killing me. Left alone and without the motivation of the rickshaw, he battles to keep going and fights the excruciating pain. Legs out. Feet hurt. Like crazy. At 8 p.m. and barely able to walk, Eddie finishes his fourth marathon. That was tough. That was very tough. But he still faces another 39 marathons to run if he's going to succeed. I didn't know I was going to make that one. The canal was beautiful, but it's gravel and broken rocks in the ground, and that's tough. I'm going to pop your blisters tonight. We've tried the conservative method, it's not working, we're going to go non-conservative. My blisters are now going to be done tonight. Wow, that's going to be joy. Four marathons have almost broken him, and now his legs have seized up in the short drive to the hotel. Joe begins to treat Eddie's feet, but just removing the protective plasters is proving difficult, as his skin is extremely tender. One quick one, okay? Mm-hmm. Eddie's blisters are sacks of fluid caused by friction in his trainers and aggravated by the rocky, loose surface of the canal path. You can manage them. Um, they're much easier to manage when you're not doing an ultra-endurance event, like I do. Using a sterile needle, Joe begins to drain the fluid, taking care not to rip the skin. It might just be that you have to put up with the pain on your toes for a couple more days. If you can save my feet, then... I my best. Joe must prevent the blisters from spreading to stop this becoming a challenge-ending injury. With so much more money to raise, the team are having doubts that Eddie will complete the task. Alfie, the official photographer, decides to take charge. We had a big discussion last night uh, about the fact that, you know, getting out of the hotel, uh, getting to the set-off point, has been taking too long. So we've kind of decided that what we're going to do today is get a sort of like a bit of a military operation going. <coughs> operation Alfie begins in earnest, and Eddie manages to get up and go in less than an hour. One of his earliest starts. But two hours in, he has to tackle the hilly terrain surrounding the historic spa town of Bath. I thought Bath was known for the waters, not for the hills. It's a bloody huge hill to get in. This is a bloody huge hill going down. And my fear is that there's another bloody huge hill on the other side. It's painful because your feet push into the edges and I got the blisters on the outside toes. Eddie's biggest battle is in his head. Every step is mental torture. Joe can do nothing for the pain. She can only prevent the blisters growing using surgical spirit and regularly changing the dressings. He's going to spend a huge amount of time on the road on his own. Being a competitive athlete, it is fundamentally miserable. What he needs is he needs support and he needs people around him. But news of Eddie's mission is growing, and in Bristol, he begins to get much needed encouragement. We're going over the bridge! <laughs> Thank you very much. Charitable person. Clifton Suspension Bridge. The support helps Eddie to finish his fifth marathon, 26.2 miles. Due to the deterioration of his feet, he decides he will always stop at a marathon, no longer running his planned 30 miles a day. Uh, this is worse than yesterday. This, this one is torn, it's opened itself. Which is what you want to avoid. And some pus in there, very nice. Can you see it? I want to see what that looks like when I've, I've popped it, because if it stays like that, I don't need to go to the doctors and get some antibiotics. Eddie's feet are becoming infected. Joe needs to stop the infection spreading, as it can lead to further medical problems. My toenails should... could... should? No, could. hopefully not. Could fall off. And so could your nipples as well. Seriously? Did you not know that? Yeah, you can get a jogger's nipple when you run. It rubs against your nipple. You genuinely didn't know that, did you? Yeah. 
And your dick can drop off. You get Jerry's dick. <laughs> I don't know rubs that. against. That's, I can't do much. And then it just drops off. And your head drops off. This is uh, the Severn Bridge. We get over there and the flags change. Running over the Severn Bridge to Newport, Wales will mark Eddie's sixth marathon, six days in a row. He will have one day off before continuing his journey to Cardiff and onto the Brecon Beacons, stopping to visit his old house in Skewen, where he has his last memories of his mum. First one over this bridge in 1967, and 42 years later. It's quite a thing. It's an estuary, it's bigger than a river. Four miles. It's going to be weird. I'm going to be where is the middle of this bridge? Where is the middle of the bridge? It must be there. It must be right at the low point of the Dingley Downs, as they call it. Here we go. He celebrates running from England into Wales with his own personal flag changing ceremony. Eddie has been updating his location on the web and a fan has tracked him down in the middle of the bridge. It's fantastic that you do a marathon every day. I, I know, it's a bit that. weird, isn't it? This is the sixth marathon and uh, it's funny, meet the people you meet on the Severn Bridge. Welcome to Wales. Thank you very much. We've got some homemade Welsh cakes here. If you can understand, you'd be really hungry. Well, I've heard all about it from a couple um, of punters in there. You're some sort of hero. He's generating a crowd of followers, all inspired by what he's doing. Guess how many spots they have, Eddie? Seven. <laughs> his growing entourage are on hand to give him encouragement and keep him and his battery-assisted rickshaw moving. Are you run out of electricity? <laughs> Thank God an entire family came along that could help. <laughs> this is Swiss family Robinson, this is basically. Eddie drags himself to Newport, South Wales, and another marathon is conquered. Six marathons. Six days. I hope the day off can do something to mend me a bit. At all costs, Eddie wants to finish this. What our job is to do is to make that a, a real possibility. But at the same time, we've got to balance that against Eddie's health. Oh, Eddie's day off will consist of a 15 mile walk to stop his muscles from seizing up and a thorough medical checkup. Door, 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 door. Week two, base camp. It's like Everest, but if Everest was really flat, if you took Everest and put it down, so there's none of that up, and there's the snow, no snow, but you're running, I oh, forget it. And there's traffic, imagine there's traffic on Everest. <laughs> to help motivate Eddie through another full week of marathons, a team of athletes join him. Among them is Kim Smith, a sports specialist, on hand to treat any injuries as they happen. <sighs> Unfortunately, just 10 minutes into the run, Eddie pulls up. He's got a problem with his knee. In Cardiff, his support team get their first chance to assess the injury. Wow. <coughs> Fingers crossed it's more that and not ITB. Uh, Why is ITB bad? Uh, it's not. Oh, tell me. I need to know. It's a long tendon. There's right. not a great blood supply, so it takes a long time to get better. The IT band is a tendon running down the length of Eddie's leg. It's become inflamed affecting the joint in his knee. But the root of the problem comes from the blisters on his feet. He's starting to drag his feet because he's so exhausted and because his feet are hurting him so much. And when you do that, your running style changes, your running gait changes, and you can start to get aches and pains in your muscles in other various places. With the pain increasing, his speed has dropped dramatically. But Eddie prefers to keep running, risking further aggravation to his injury. I am worried for him. Eddie seems to not want to walk a day. And I think if he carries on running like this, he's going to burn himself out. Well, I thought you were here. I'm, I'm, I'm aware of the dot is, but you're not here. Where are you? He's desperate to complete the marathon, phoning the support team for updates on the exact location of the finish line. Yes. 
Sorry, I can't hear you. Oh. Is that the ice cream van? You see that? Eddie crawls to his seventh marathon, but the effects of running have taken their toll. His IT band is worse, and his whole leg has now seized up. This is a very painful procedure. Um, a lot of people suffer from full leg bruising after they've had their IT band stripped. Don't panic, that Eddie's like crying. Mm. But it's really, really good. <coughs> One more, one more. Okay, okay, breathe, breathe, breathe. One more, one more. Okay, we're done, we're done, we're done. Deep breath. Well, when we came down, all of us, you know, the crew, everybody else, we were all, you know, we're all just sitting there going, oh my God, this is going to be horrific. But then we all got together, we all had a little chat and said, right, whatever happens, this is the day we really need to smile. Don't matter how wet we get or how bad we feel or how cold we are or how much we're missing home, we've got to really smile today. This is a uh, day something or other. And I've been trying to do 30 miles a day, I can't, well, psychologically I find it really difficult. No one is going to join me in run today, I think, unless they're mad. Uh, po on the positive side, nothing, really. Well, I've done seven marathons, that's positive. Trudging through the rain, the landscape becomes more barren and industrial. But the sight of the Breckens in the distance seemed to inspire him and bring back memories of his days living close by as a kid. You can see the beginning of the hills right behind the houses. When I was a kid, there were smells, there were distinctive smells. Smells can be really evocative. And I smelt Port Talbot, which is coming up soon. I could smell it and I, I recognised that smell, very industrial. It just hit me like a wave of memory. As he gets closer to his old home in Skewen, it seems to bring back some painful memories. My memories of being in Wales were not terribly positive. My mum died when I was here, so we didn't have a great time. But it's not Wales' fault, it's not the Welsh people's fault, it just happened. And uh, when I was a teenager, I cycled from Swansea, now from Sussex, where I lived, near Hastings, all the way to Skewen, along this road. And now I'm almost back doing the same on my feet. Why is that way? Why did I go back? Why did I go back? I don't know, I keep going back. Probably to try and... Uh, recapture the time before my mum died. 